Glenn Allen Robinson Jr., born January 10th, 1973. My first question for you is... How? Hold on, bro. How? How you... I'm saying... How, like, talk to me, bro. How is Glenn Robinson not a Hall of Famer? He had an All-American high school career, one of the best college careers ever in the NCAA, and some would argue the best ever as an individual. He was a number one pick that actually lived up to their selection, took his underwhelming Milwaukee team all the way to the conference finals, became an NBA All-Star twice, and still is one of the biggest All-NBA team selection snubs not named Bradley Beal. Some say he had one of the best mid-range NBA games of all time, which he used to average 20 points a game over his career along with 6 rebounds and shot over 80% from the foul line. Although at the tail end of his career, he even won an NBA championship. So if my last two features, Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady, are Hall of Famers, first ballot at that, why isn't Glenn Robinson? Here are three reasons why he hasn't even been considered as of yet. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. As you get it, man. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'd just like to let you know that the Patreon page is now live. There you can find workouts to help you not have your growth stunted and much more. Patreon.com slash stunted growth right now. A link is in the description. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Glenn Robinson is from Gary, Indiana, one of the states well known for producing great basketball talent. There, he became a star for his high school team and by his senior season, won a state championship. He was named Indiana's Mr. Basketball and ranked the fifth best prospect in the 91 class which says a lot seeing as it had one of the more stacked classes of the 90s, including the Fab Five, Travis Best, and a handful of names that would go on to have NBA careers. He was also a McDonald's All-American and Dapper Dan Classic participant, where he, along with Chris Webber, shared the MVP award. Glenn Robinson Jr. was the real deal. He was six foot seven, 240 pounds, could jump, shoot, post up and rebound. At the time of him entering college, there was literally nothing he couldn't do. Off the court was different. He struggled with his schoolwork and upon accepting a scholarship to Purdue, they soon realized that they would have to prop 48 him, which means sit him down for a year in order for his grades to catch up. During this time, he worked tirelessly on his game and picked up an after-school job where he met a custodian that actually gave him the name people like Jay-Z would later reference in his music. Stunt number one, sample size. The first reason I don't think Glenn Robinson gets the Hall of Fame nod some of his pairs who produced less averages for a career than he did was because while he had an amazing career, I don't think people in charge felt it was long enough to prove its worth. While he did average more points for a career than both Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill, they both played over 15 seasons with Grant right on the cusp of a 20 year career. I'd even say the only reason Glenn's averages didn't slip below those guys was because as soon as he was declining, he was done because of injuries to his knees. It worked out for his averages, but not for his Hall of Fame potential. At Purdue, when he finally took the floor, Robinson was more than spectacular. He was dominant from the beginning, leading the team in scoring and one of the tops in the nation at 24 a game, adding 9 rebounds, 2 steals, 1 block and shooting 40% from 3. The team made the tournament and Big Dog was named a first team all-conference selection and second team All-American. In his second playing season, he put up video game numbers, especially for a college player, averaging a nation leading 30 points a game and 10 boards while leading the conference in both categories and a Big Ten championship. The team not only made the NCAA tournament that year, but also to an Elite Eight appearance. His team lost to Grand Hill and the Blue Devils and Robinson was held to just 13 points. He became the conference and NCAA player of the year, winning the Wooden and Naismith awards. 
individually, you couldn't want a better college career than that outside of winning it all. Robinson was a sought after prospect at that point and the clear cut number one overall pick, which he was taken by Milwaukee over names like Eddie Jones and co-rookies of the year and future Hall of Famers Jason Kidd and Grant Hill. He signed the richest rookie contract to date in a 10 year $68 million deal with the Bucks, and in all but one season in 8 years he averaged 20 points or more, including his rookie season where he led all rookies in scoring and should have been named the NBA Rookie of the Year in my opinion, but I don't think he was seen as marketable as Jason or Grant so he didn't. The Bucks would trade their star player after his eighth season, seeing as the team and its big three of Cassell, Ray Allen, and Robinson wasn't producing in the playoffs like they were expected to outside of the lone conference finals in 2001. He would only play three seasons after that, one each with Atlanta, the Sixers, and San Antonio where his numbers declined due to injury and not being on teams where he was the first option any longer. He was an all-star just twice with the Bucks in 2000 and 2001. Had he put together more seasons of this production, maybe he'd have a Hall of Fame chance. Stunt number two, winning enough. Of anything. Yes, Glenn Robb was a two-time all-star, but that's really about all he won in his 11-year NBA career. As a team, his Bucks missed the playoffs five of the eight seasons he was there and couldn't beat a one-man-led Sixers team in the conference finals, even with a big three in their prime. Now you can say, well, Tracy didn't win much and Grant never won either. Neither has a championship to their name and Glenn does. Well, individually, Tracy and Grant are both highly decorated, becoming perennial all-stars and earning multiple All-NBA Team awards, Rookie of the Year in Grant Hill, signature shoe deals, sportsmanship awards, scoring titles. There's at least a great individual case for both, even though a championship eluded them and Glenn Robinson was able to win one. You also have to look at the fact that that championship came in his final season when you can say he basically bandwagoned that title, joining the Spurs in the early 2000s as they began to have their well-documented reign over the NBA. Also, he only played 9 games for that team, joining at the tail end of April that season right before the playoffs began. I'm not even sure if that should count. Nevertheless, he's credited for it on paper, but when the Hall of Fame committee sits down and look at that, I don't think it holds much weight. Winning more individually and as a team where he played an important role could have really helped his case. Stunt number three, outside of basketball. Another overlooked but in my opinion important part of getting into the Hall of Fame is keeping your face in the game. Being seen after retirement in household lights. At the end of the day, these are people who are selecting these players for the Hall of Fame. If they somehow develop a liking to your personality on certain shows or the basketball knowledge you clearly have and show you're willing to give back in developing the game further, I think they're softer on you when your name comes up. Upon leaving the game due to knee injuries in 2005, Robinson kind of disappeared. You didn't see much of him like you see a Grant Hill or a Tracy McGrady, Paul Pierce. You weren't allowed to hear his takes on the games like those guys, sometimes seeing his highlights mixed in there. Now this doesn't always work, just ask Chris Webber or Chauncey Billups, but it doesn't hurt to try. Outside of basketball, I think the name Glenn Robinson goes forgotten every year the game gets older, only to be carried by his younger son who himself is fighting his way through the obstacles of surviving the league. Seeing Glenn Robinson talk about what it took to help him lead the nation in scoring, explain that he was injured the game before playing Duke, which led to Grant shutting him down, could shed some light on his chance and then who knows? I do know it all but kills those chances when no one remembers you anymore and sees it as just easy to pass you by. All in all, I think Glenn deserves to be a Hall of Famer. He has way too much respect across the league not to, and is known as one of the best at what he did, which was a killer in the mid-range area. 
He was an amazing college player, very solid NBA player, who should have been an all-star more than he was, and whom I still think was robbed of his rookie of the year. He was better than both Hill and Kidd that year, and his team was also arguably better. But hey, can change history, right? Glenn Robinson was still a great player in my book, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute to him, much respect. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.